Hi, this is Graham Helfrich, Technical Advisor Manager for the Engineering Software here at IHS Market. Welcome to the weekly Did You Know episode where we learn how to do something of value that you probably didn't know about your IHS Market engineering software. Today, we're going to talk about a topic that impacts both reservoir engineers and production engineers liquid loading. Today we're going to see how you can both determine which of your wells are liquid loaded in seconds, plus how you can do a better RTA analysis by filtering out liquid loaded data. Let's check it out. So we're going to have a look at both a conventional well and then an unconventional well. Here's our first well. So this is a vertical tight gas well and we have about two or three years of production history and we have our tubing flowing pressure and we have our water rates. Of course anytime you do RTA if you're using surface flowing pressures we're going to need to convert down to our bottom hole flowing pressures and that's built in to the Harmony Enterprise software. So the result of this is a calculated bottom hole flowing pressure which we're going to use for all of our interpretation. So being that this is a conventional well, we're going to use some of these techniques like the blasting game type curve. So I'm going to try to move my data where I think that it fits best. Now for me this well looks like it's definitely in boundary dominated flow and there's a bit of noise here but I may pick this as my match in which case I get about 19 acres of drainage area. I can use a different technique, the flowing material balance for the same well try to make my interpretation here. Okay, and I get a slightly higher area, 22 acres. That's pretty normal to get uh, a couple different answers, but we're, we're in the range here, 19 to 22 acres, so about 1 BCF as our original gas in place. If I go to my reservoir model, I can do my history match, and I can see that my history match, it looks really good and this is using again about one BCF as our original gas in place. If we do a forward looking forecast we can apply a 30 year forecast and we get a pretty high recovery rate considering this is conventional uh, of about 900,000 cubic feet. Okay that's great. Now that analysis I just did it ignoring liquid loading. One of the things we really recommend is just looking at your raw data to check it out before you begin your analysis. So in this case we're going to look at the liquid loading. If you don't already have a liquid loading filter built you can build one from scratch. The way I do that is I use this button to clear off everything. I'll plot time, my operated gas rate, and then we'll go down to liquid loading rate. So you can use Turner or Coleman. Uh, there's a 20 percent difference between them. I'm going to use Turner in this case. Now one caution is if you turn on Turner you notice that it goes over on the right and this axis is kind of independent of my gas rate. Well that doesn't really help me. The fact that they're both in a thousand cubic feet per day units means I can drag this and attach it. So now the scales are matching. Okay so once you've done this you can actually save a new template. I've already got one here called liquid loading so when I apply it it appears the way I've just created it like that. So what are we seeing here? Well my actual gas rate is in red and my critical lift rate or my turner rate is in black and what this means is if my rate drops below this black line it means that the well has the potential to liquid load. There's not enough velocity at the end of the tubing to lift and sweep those liquids to the surface meaning they could fall down, load my well and add additional back pressure. So what I'm seeing is initially we're in good shape. Our rate is above the critical lift rate but over here I'm starting to get into that kind of danger zone for liquid loading and I see my rates they kind of look intermittent. This is pretty typical of kind of slugging and intermittent flow once we start to liquid load. So one of the really cool advantages of this is if you have dozens or hundreds of wells that you quickly want to screen and see if they're liquid loaded is you can simply toggle through your well list on the left. 
what I'm seeing is I'm looking at individual well histories here and I can see exactly when this particular well became liquid loaded in its past or I can see this well is not liquid loaded yet. So this is really amazing for both production and reservoir engineers to screen which wells are liquid loaded currently and when did it start. Back to our conventional well, let's perform our analysis now that we know the well may be liquid loaded. One of the things I've even done as a standard part of my workflow is I've created a liquid loading plot by default for every well that I'm going to analyze if it's gas. And you can basically see that this exists here under custom and that will force it to be a kind of a step that I follow for every well I analyze. So going back to our blasting game type curve, how do we visualize which of these data points are liquid loaded? Well, we go up to the filter button right here. It looks like a funnel. We see our data just in calendar time and there's a magic wand symbol here. We click it, we apply liquid loading filter. You may have noticed some of these data points that were red are now white. Watch our data on the right when I say apply. Okay, it just made some of these points kind of like a ghost. They're not red, but they're transparent. Those are the, our liquid loaded data points that I may not trust. So this means when I make my interpretation, I could make it different possibly. In this case, I like this interpretation and it's giving me a higher drainage area, 26 acres or almost 1.2 BCF. And you know, there's a chance it could be even a little bit bigger, maybe 30 acres. If we go to our flowing material balance, we see that that same filter has applied here. So these gray points are the liquid loaded parts of the wells history. And I may not have a reliable bottom hole pressure for those data points. All the other points are more reliable, meaning I should really focus my interpretation on them. In this case, again, I'm now I'm getting 30 acres or almost 1.5 BCF of original gas in place. When we go to our history match and our model, this filter has been applied. Notice how the liquid loaded loading data points are kind of low and the more reliable production rates are a bit higher. If we change our original gas in place to be similar to our previous steps here now, 1.5 BCF, our synthetic rate goes through those more reliable points now. Okay, what does this, what does this mean for a forecast? Well, now our forecast is a bit higher and our EUR is up to 1.3 BCF. Okay, so let's just review what are the differences in our interpretation if we ignore versus consider liquid loading. Okay, so before we consider liquid loading, our interpreted area was 21 acres. Our original gas in place was one, one BCF and our modeled EUR was about 960,000 cubic feet. After we considered liquid loading and we analyzed and focused the good part of the data that was more reliable, our area turned to be 30 acres, our original gas in place was 1.5 BCF and our EUR was about 1.3 BCF. So you can start to see the type of results that can change depending if you're focusing on the good or the bad part of the data. Okay, so that's a conventional well. What about an unconventional well? Now we're going to look at our unconventional example. So this is a shale gas well, horizontal multi-stage fracture. We have about one year of production history and here we see our gas water volumes as well as our surface flowing pressures. As usual, we're going to enter our wellbore description and convert from our surface flowing pressures down to our bottom hole pressures. So again, I'm going to look at this well as if I'm ignoring liquid loading. So we do our flowing material balance and I'm going to go ahead and make my interpretation and say that we are contacting about 37 acres or 1.7 BCF so far. I'm going to do my unconventional reservoir module looking at my square root time plot and I'm going to make my interpretation and I'm starting to see what I think is an upward curvature here of my data. So I might try to move my green line here to where I think I see that departure beginning. Um, I even have the option to turn on this option here, which is showing me potentially uh, if I use a B of one after first linear flow is over here, where that data may track. So this is kind of just a way to estimate that my SRV is 28 acres possibly and my total contacted volume 
is 37 acres so far. Okay, so then I would kind of move forward and do my model. Now, this is approaching this well, ignoring liquid loading. Let's do it the right way. So, I go to my diagnostics, I turn on my liquid loading filter. Wow, look at this. The well has been liquid loaded since April. That means my bottom of flowing pressures from this date forward are not reliable. They're probably too conservative, actually. So let's keep moving forward here and analyze this well as if I had done this important step first. So when I go to my flowing material balance, I'm going to go to my filter. I'm going to go to my magic wand. I'll do the liquid loading filter. All right, we click apply. And now I see these gray points are liquid loaded. Well, would my interpretation change? Maybe a little bit. I may focus a bit more on this trend here and get a higher contacted volume closer to 46 acres if I don't trust these data points. If I keep moving on to my linear flow analysis, wow, this is really interesting. So all these gray points are the liquid loaded data. And anytime we see the data curving upwards, uh, that's a sign of some sort of productivity loss. And that could be because we have contacted all of our SRV and we're getting transitional flow from the matrix perm. It could be uh, some sort of change in fracture conductivity. In this case, I think it's a lo productivity loss from liquid loading, not from a reservoir flow regime. What this means is I don't really trust where I put my green line anymore. I think there's a chance I may still be in first linear flow. Okay, so this is just, again, a cautionary tale to really use liquid loading to separate a wellbore problem from a change in your reservoir signal. Again, you can move this forward into your model to history match and exclude or exclude this part of the data. So what does this mean for you? Well, the first thing is it means you can very quickly screen which wells have liquid loaded and when did it start? You saw how quickly we can toggle through hundreds of wells to figure this out. And that is valuable for both production engineers and reservoir engineers. Secondly, now we can separate a reservoir signal from a liquid loading problem. I've seen engineers spend hours trying to make sense of data diagnostically in their reservoir model. That doesn't make sense. If you go back and look at the raw data and apply this liquid loading quick check before you do your interpretation, you could save yourself a ton of headache and get a more reliable forecast. Thanks for watching. For any questions, please be sure to contact me and make sure to subscribe to be notified of next week's Did You Know episode.